We see Christ on the cross. We see the two thieves in front of him. We see the cutouts in the rock and back. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, and there was a great earthquake. The earthquake opened up the rock below the cross hole. The rock extended down into the cave below, and the stone lid of the box was broken and moved askew. Christ was pierced in his side. The blood came out, ran down this crack, and fell onto the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. So you have a, a slide presentation to show us of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, yes. first of all, uh, if it's not in your presentation somewhere, I don't want to steal your thunder, but uh, where is this located? The oh, where we get into that? The Ark of the Covenant? It's, the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, it's, it's uh, north of the old city walls, mm -hmm. and it's in the Garden Tomb grounds. Hmm. It's located in that area, underground in a cave. And that's where Mr. Wyatt found it. It's still there today. Interesting. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, so, without further ado, go ahead. Tell us about sure. the Ark of the Covenant and how he found it. Yes. And so our first slide here is myself with Ron Wyatt in 1997. Um, as we were saying, Mr. Wyatt is the discoverer of the Ark of the Covenant. He also found the Noah's Ark site, the Sodom and Gomorrah sites, the Red Sea Crossing, the real Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia. Mm. And so his credibility has been established. And when he comes out with this report of finding the Ark of the Covenant, we should believe him. Because, you know, on the Day of Atonement, in historical times, when the high priest would go into the most holy place to anoint the most holy, or the Ark of the Covenant, only one person would go in. And it wasn't a committee going in. It was one person, and Mr. White was chosen by God to be able to go into that cave he mm. came out with a report, and it's very exciting information. And we talked about the, the death of those folks who tried to follow in and do something, uh, you know, uh, noble with it, but they, they died going in, and we, we talked about that on the first episode of the series. Yes, yes, God, you know, is, is protecting the Ark. In 1995, there were six men sent up this tunnel to try to get to the Ark of the Covenant, and they were all struck dead. Mm. And Mr. White was asked to pull their bodies out. I'm assuming because everyone else was afraid to uh, right. <laughs> do anything, and he made right. it in and out alive. Yes. <laughs> so uh, wow. the Israelis know that it's real, that it's there, but they don't know what to do. Goodness. Okay, so what are we seeing here? So this is the entrance to the Garden Tomb Grounds. Uh, this is a very significant area. This is the Protestant location, you could say, of Jesus' burial site. And inside is the tomb of Christ. His feet would have been placed to the right, and then his head to the left. They had to carve out the feet area because he was apparently taller than Joseph of Arimathea. Oh, interesting. Uh, this is like six feet four inches in length right here. And then this is where you exit the tomb. This is the exact place where Jesus walked. It's, it's mm. a tremendous opportunity to be able to walk out of this cave this is a, or this uh, wow. tomb. You can actually walk out where Jesus walked out triumphantly. This is the best place to go on earth. It's incredible. And this is uh, unlike a lot of other archaeological sites that are made up or supposed or assumed. There's enough evidence to suggest that this is the real one. Yes. The uh, ceiling stone or rolling stone, we're told in the Bible, was a great stone. And it was found over at the site we'll see shortly was the crucifixion site. Mm. It was moved over there and incorporated with the crucifixion area. So the local Christians knew this was the crucifixion site and the tomb of Christ. So here in front of the tomb, we see a cutout area where early Christians would have done foot washings, oh, service okay. of humility. And so this is an image of Mr. Wyatt. He was the one who found the crucifixion area we're going to see, found the Ark of the Covenant. And if you head back to the further areas of the garden, away from the actual tomb, you'll come to an area where Mr. Wyatt was walking with a gentleman head of the Jerusalem Antiquities Authority for the Jerusalem area in 1978, and Ron's arm was lifted up, hmm. and God put these words in his mouth, there's Jeremiah's grotto, and the Ark of the Covenant is in there, and this is a spot Mr. Wyatt pointed to, ah. a trash heap next to this rock escarpment. 
Wow. And he was puzzled. Why did I say, you know, those words? But uh, the Israeli authority official said that they would provide him a place to stay, they would give him a permit, provide his food. And so in 1979, the next year, he started the excavation for the Ark of the Covenant. Hmm. And these are the words, there's Jeremiah's grotto and the Ark of the Covenant is in there. So this is an image of Mr. Wyatt digging the excavation started in 79 and in 1982 is when he actually found the cave. Now here's some of the group they are helping him with the excavation. A lot of people volunteered for the dig for the ark. He'd actually dug two tunnels. Mm. Uh, the first tunnel, he made it into the cave in 1982, January 6, and then around 1989, 1990, he finished the second tunnel. So digging two tunnels, if you're a fraud, all you need is one tunnel. But he felt like some of the temple furnishings needed to come out. Ah. And he dug a second tunnel that was more direct, a better tunnel getting to the Ark Cave. Spent a lot of money on that. And so... Big enough to, to drag out some of the items. Yes. Which he never did, incidentally. Right. He understood later that things were not coming out. Is that, was that just for uh, reasons of keeping things holy and leave it alone? Or, or what, what was the reason he didn't bring it out? Well, originally the things... Uh, there were a lot of stones packed in in this cave with the temple furnishings. And in this fourth visit uh, that we'll see in a video here, that everything was cleaned out and everything was placed in order, mm. in orderly fashion. The angels or God arranged everything neatly. And so he felt like, hey, this is a permanent arrangement mm. and that things would not be coming out. He so, dare not touch it. Yes. Okay. Right. Gotcha. So here's an image of Mr. Wyatt in one of the tunnels squeezing through. There were chimneys going up and chimneys going down and sliding across a board, a 40-foot chasm below. Oh, goodness. And so the first tunnel, very precarious, 100 feet in length. But uh, Did he dig all of these or did he find tunnels, uh, dig a little bit and find a tunnel and followed it? What, what there were the some process? naturally carved out of the limestone mm. that could allow you to go a little further and you know, created some additional routes for him to, to go down and, and he didn't know exactly where underground to look. It was just a matter of exploring and, and digging through the rock huh. and so forth. But during the excavation, he found these cutouts in the rock, the cutouts in the rock face. Hmm. This is where the signs were placed, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, hmm. at Jesus' crucifixion. And this may have also been placed on the cross itself. But these were large public signs for people traveling through the area to see what was going on here, who was being crucified. Right, because the Romans were very public about that. They wanted yes. to put their crucifixions on a main road so that no one would dare mess with the Romans. Intimidation, yes, yeah. that's part of their plan. This is another image of the cutouts. Mr. White here with one of his sons who helped with the early excavation. And I guess the cutouts were, and with the signs, were like a, an ancient billboard. Yes. That this is what this person did. Right. And let it be known that yes. you'll be humiliated if you do the same. The name and what they're guilty of, mm. you know. So, uh, and during the excavation, this is Mr. Wyatt's photo, he was able to locate the cross hole. Mm. This is the cross hole this of Christ. Is, so this is a center. Now he found, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I've heard this where he, he found three. And he's, this is the center one. Yes, this is the center one, and it's in the bedrock. But uh, there have been some other photos kind of passed around previously, but this is the correct one here. Uh, this is an image taken by Mr. Wyatt. Now, is there a crack that we see there in the bottom? Is that what that is? That's actually the handle of a crowbar oh, okay. in the, the bottom area there. But uh, so when he first found the cutouts and the cross hole, and then later, he made it into the cave and found here the cave was in a stone box and there were a lot of stones packed in there on top of the temple furnishings. Underneath the stones were animal skins and, mm. bo and boards that they were, they were protecting the temple furnishings. So Mr. Wyatt crawled in there and saw the sarcophagus, it was like a stone box holding the Ark of the Covenant. And inside, this is an image of it again, inside the box was the Ark of the Covenant 
Um, did he try to uh, photograph it? Did he? At that moment, he could not get into it, but his next trip in there, he drilled a hole in the side of the stone box and put in a little camera. He could see uh, the Ark of the Covenant inside of there mm. with that. So, yeah. And then inside the cave, he saw the original entrance by Jeremiah's men. Jeremiah's mm. men hid the Ark of the Covenant in this cave when the Babylonian army had surrounded Jerusalem in 586 B.C. They didn't want, of course, the Ark to be destroyed by the Babylonians or taken away, so God had it uh, hidden in this chamber. And this is the entrance here that Jeremiah's men used to bring the Ark in here. And uh, Michael, uh uh, pay, pays attention to this as well with the the se great secret of Solomon's temple, which is how the Ark of the Covenant was taken out of the temple and then whisked away to this location uh, very secretly. You can yes. look at that too. Yes. So yes, it was taken down into Zedekiah's cave and then brought up a tunnel underground to this current location, a cave mm -hmm. uh, about 40 feet underground. Now, when Christ died and the earth shook and the rocks were rent, a crack came right down the entire face of the escarpment, right past the left side of the cross hole, and the stone opened up. Down below, 20 feet below, God had arranged for the Ark of the Covenant with its mercy seat, if you please, his earthly throne to be positioned right down there 600 years before in 586 B.C. <coughs> when the Babylonian army destroyed the city. When the centurion stuck his spear in Christ's spleen and probably left ventricle to make sure he was dead before he gave the body to Joseph of Arimathea, when he pulled that spear out, the separated platelets and serum of the blood of the Son of God gushed out, went down through that crack onto the mercy seat, and that ratified the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. That is amazing. So how exactly did this happen? So we've got some animation here showing how this happened. Uh, we see Christ on the cross. We see the two thieves in front of him. We see the cutouts in the rock and back, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, and there was a great earthquake. The earthquake opened up the rock below the cross hole. The rock extended down into the cave below and the stone lid of the box was broken and moved askew. Christ was pierced in his side. The blood came out, ran down this crack, and fell onto the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. Quite amazing stuff. That is. Now, he, now that, this, is, this is 18 feet down, something? There's 18 feet of bedrock? It's 20 feet of bedrock, yes. Of bedrock. Now, that's plausible because when they, when they put, pr thrust the... Uh, the sword into his side, there was a lot of liquid that came out there. Yes. So it is plausible that it would travel 20 feet down. Yes. They separated red blood cells, white blood cells, the, the water and the blood mm -hmm. came out of his side and fell down and anointed the Most Holy. And um, that left side of the Ark of the Covenant, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it was kept open. It was not ever anointed by the blood of bulls and goats in the past. It was kept vacant for this application. You know, I've seen pictures of how that happened, but seeing it in animation really helps to understand exactly what happened there. It brings it to life, doesn't yeah. it? Yes. So the blood fell on this left side, the western side of the Ark of the Covenant. Now we're told in Leviticus 16, and he shall take the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. Before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. So when the priests went in there on the Day of Atonement, always they sprinkled it toward the east or would be the right side of the Ark of the Covenant, leaving a vacant left side or western side of the Ark of the Covenant. I'm sure the, the high priest knew that that left side, the western side, was being kept vacant for the application of the Messiah to one day give his blood. And so on the mercy seat, you have the blood of Jesus on the left or western side hmm. and the blood of bulls and, and goats on the right side, both of them a testimony 
Now we're told in Daniel 9, 24, 70 weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. So this most holy place is where the Ark of the Covenant rested. It was called the most holy place because it was the most holy. And we're told here that it would atone for iniquity. What happened on the day of atonement? Blood was placed on the most holy. So I believe here in Daniel 9, 24, this is prophesying that within this time period of the 70 weeks mm -hmm. that uh, the Messiah would anoint the most holy. And that's what happened. And then we're also told in Leviticus 17, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that make atonement for the soul. So Jesus' life was represented by that blood. His sinless life was placed on the altar and was making atonement for us. Not a life of a sinner, but a life of a sinless person atoned for our sins. So it's very significant. Shalom, Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon, and I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new michaelrood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.